around 70 million years ago, in what is now central Romania, the prehistoric island of Hayteg lay isolated in the warm, shallow seas of the late Cretaceous. This landmass, part of the ancient European archipelago, was a subtropical haven covered in ferns, cycads, conifers and flowering plants, nourished by rivers and floodplains under a humid climate. The Hayteg ecosystem was unlike anything we know today, a world shaped by geological isolation and evolutionary constraints. Fossils preserved in formations like Sampatru reveal a vibrant community of animals, dwarf dinosaurs, strange crocodile-like creatures, flight-capable pterosaurs, and resilient small mammals. One of Hayteg's most fascinating features was its insular dwarfism, a natural process where large animals evolved smaller body sizes over generations due to limited resources, reduced predation, and spatial constraints. Sauropods like Magurosaurus shrank to the size of a rhinoceros, while theropods developed stocky limbs and unusual features. This island rule created a miniaturized version of the dinosaur world, preserved in extraordinary detail in the rocks of Transylvania. Today, paleontologists walk the gentle hills of Romania's Hayteg Basin, uncovering pieces of this lost island, each fossil a glimpse into an ancient ecosystem fossilized in time. Resembling tiny salamanders, usually only around 5 cm long, albinerpatonted fossils have been found worldwide. They're thought to have lived mostly in leaf litter, similarly to some small modern lizards like ground skinks, wriggling and burrowing through the loose material and preying on small invertebrates. Their most notable feature was their body being covered in a mosaic of small scales, although unlike reptile scales these were bony structures formed under a layer of skin, structurally much more like fish scales and they probably weren't particularly visible in life. They also had very flexible necks for amphibians, with a convergently mammal-like joint between their skull and vertebrae. Colocobotion is originally described by Franz Nopca but long considered enigmatic due to limited fossil material. Recent discoveries, including the best preserved skull to date, have clarified its anatomy and confirmed its position as a close relative to Crown Testudines. A 3D reconstruction and detailed neuroanatomical study revealed features supporting a terrestrial lifestyle. These findings not only improve our understanding of its evolutionary placement but also shed light on the sensory capabilities of early turtles. Several lizard jaws have been found at the site, these species appear to be fairly common and are present throughout much of the European archipelago. Aladiposuchus was a relatively small crocodilomorph, with the largest individuals reaching around 3 meters in length. It had a short, rounded skull, with snout proportions varying by species. A distinctive trait of this genus is the unique orientation of the craniopodrate passage, which is visible from the side of the skull, unlike in other crocodilomorphs. One species shows remarkable adaptations for life on land, including enlarged sinuses that may have enhanced hearing outside of water and reduced skull weight. It also had robust forelimb musculature, suggesting a semi-erect gait well suited for terrestrial movement. Fossil evidence from floodplain environments with seasonal ponds supports the idea that it may have spent considerable time on land, moving between temporary water sources in search of food. Struthiosaurus was a very small nodosaur with fossils seemingly coming from individuals about 2 meters in length. This is likely a reflection of Struthiosaurus living on islands which had reduced food availability. By growing smaller, it would have been much less likely to exhaust the limited food sources, and so this could be chalked up as a case of insular dwarfism. Examinations of its brain published in 2022 suggest it had very poor hearing and relied mostly on its armor for defense against predators. Its flocculus was very small and its legina were very short, suggesting it was very sluggish in nature as well as solitary. Zalmoxus was a small, bipedal herbivorous dinosaur with a triangular skull and beak, native exclusively to the Hayteg Island. Two species are recognized, Zalmoxus robustus, reaching up to 2.5 meters and 45 kilograms, and the larger Zalmoxus schipororum, with individuals up to 3 meters long. 
Though originally thought by Franz Noxa to be an example of island dwarfism, later studies suggest Zalmoxa's retained a body size similar to its rhabdodontid ancestors, with possible slight dwarfism in Robustu species. Anatomical differences between the two species include variations in jaw proportions and sacral vertebrae. The species had relatively slow growth rates and prolonged development, which may reflect unique life history strategies shaped by their insular environment. Dietary studies suggest that Zalmoxas fed on tough, fibrous vegetation like horsetails, ferns, and early flowering plants, and was capable of processing C3 carbon fixation plants. Its robust body and strong jaw suggest it was well adapted to an herbivorous lifestyle in a resource-limited island ecosystem. Many of the dinosaurs of Hayteg Island grew smaller through a process called insular dwarfism. In the simplest terms, they grew smaller so that they did not need to eat so much food to fuel their bodies, and so they could continue to thrive upon the limited amounts of resources. Telmodosaurus itself also seems to have grown smaller through this process since it only attained a length of around 5 meters. Other hadrosaurids in other parts of the world and living upon larger land masses comfortably attained sizes around the 9 to 10 meter long range, with many genera exceeding even this. The discovery of an ameloblastoma in a dinosaur gives evidence that the development of benign tumors is a basal characteristic, not just a relatively modern condition. It is unlikely that the tumor caused the dinosaur any serious pain during its early stages of development, just as in humans with the same condition, but researchers can tell from its size that this particular dinosaur died before it reached adulthood. Since its preserved remains consist of only the two lower jaws, no one can ascertain its cause of death. Palaeodidotin was a small titanosaurian sauropod notable for its reduced body size, also an adaptation interpreted as a clear example of insular dwarfism. Unlike its massive relatives on larger landmasses, Palaeodidotin likely measured only around 6 meters in length, far smaller than typical titanosaurs. It shares several anatomical traits with other lithostrotian titanosaurs but also presents unique features in its vertebrae and pelvis that distinguish it from other sauropods in the region, including Magurosaurus. Its bones suggest a lightly built frame, possibly an adaptation to the resource-scarce and spatially limited island environment. Phylogenetic analyses place Palaeodidotin among more derived titanosaurs, closely related to species found in South America and Asia, hinting at complex biogeographical connections during the late Cretaceous. Magurosaurus was a small sauropod with adult individuals measuring between 2 and 2. 8 meters at shoulders and weighing less than a ton, remarkably small for a member of the typically giant sauropod group. This evolutionary process occurred due to the island's limited resources and reduced predator pressure, favoring smaller, more energy-efficient body sizes. Magurosaurus also possessed dermal armor, an unusual feature for sauropods, which may have offered additional protection in its isolated environment. A tail vertebra with transitional features was assigned to this genus based on morphology and the lack of other sauropods in the area, further reinforcing its identity. Early 20th century paleontologist Franz Noxa was the first to propose island dwarfism to explain Magurosaurus's small stature, a theory later confirmed by histological studies showing mature bone tissue in small sized individuals. This refuted earlier claims that the fossils represented juveniles. The dwarfism may also have led to Magurosaurus retaining more primitive traits than its mainland relatives. Environmental data suggests that the Hayteg region experienced a shift from a subhumid, seasonally wet climate to a more extensive wetland during the later Maastrichtian. In 1932, Friedrich von Huene established the genus Magurosaurus and assigned three species to it, Dacus, Hungaricus, and Transylvanicus. Later studies confirmed Dacus species as the only valid species, with Transylvanicus species being a chimera and a junior synonym of Dacus. In 2025, Magurosaurus hungaricus was reassigned to a new genus called Petrus Titan, named after the rocky origin of its fossils and the term Titan for large sauropods. The holotype of Petrus Titan is by its tibia and fibula. Some material previously referred to Magurosaurus hungaricus was also assigned to a separate genus, Uriash.
The species of Megalosaurus found in the Hayteg Basin is notable for its small size, a result of island dwarfism again, which was common among dinosaurs on this island. Unlike its larger relatives, this Megalosaurus likely grew to only about 6 meters in length, much smaller than the typical Jurassic theropod. Fossils of this species, primarily found in the Sampatra Formation, include partial skeletons that suggest it was a carnivorous predator, possibly preying on smaller herbivores and other vertebrates on the island. The species is also significant for its role in understanding how larger dinosaurs adapted to isolated ecosystems with limited resources. For now, this species is not fully validated by the scientific community, as the genus Megalosaurus is typically from the late Jurassic, nearly 100 million years earlier. Modern interpretations have differed on the question whether the Bradycneme and Heptastiornis material should be included, they have meanwhile been synonymized and split from each other in Elopteryx many times, and what the exact affiliations of the material would be. Various solutions were proposed for this problem. Previously, some researchers proposed Elopteryx was a member of the Dromaeosauridae or Trodontidae, without being able to support this with much empirical evidence. In 1998 Cheeky and Grigorescu suggested that Elopteryx belonged to the Manoraptora, while Bradycneme had a more basal position in the Tetanuri. Bradycneme draculae, known only from a partial right lower leg, which its original describers believed came from a giant owl. In the most recent assessments, Bradycneme and Heptastiornis were found to be the same and most likely basal members of the Tetanuri in one study, but Darren Nash and Gareth J. Dyke did not follow the synonymy and found Heptastiornis to be an alvarosaurid, while classifying Bradycneme as an indeterminate Manoraptoran. In a 2011 classification, Tom Holtz assigned Bradycneme to the alvarosauridae along with Heptastiornis. The diet of alvarosaurs is actually something of a question, assuming, of course, that Bradycneme was one, it would probably match the other members of its group. One of the most popular hypotheses is that these dinosaurs are insectivores, but until more is known, we should probably go with the null hypothesis of omnivore. The behavior of Heptastiornis is a bit uncertain, not only because we don't know what sort of dinosaur it is, but because the behavior of alvarosaurs is somewhat dubious. It used to be thought that they dug their way to food with their little claws, but that's just one hypothesis. Regardless, Heptastiornis would probably have been a somewhat skittish, bird-like animal, energetic and using running as its main method of escape from danger. It also probably would have taken care of its young, and used feathers in both thermoregulation and display. Gargantuavis is a fascinating giant bird-like animal, known for its remarkable size, being one of the largest flightless birds of its time. It likely grew up to 2.5 meters in length and weighed around 40 kilograms, with strong, robust legs suggesting it was a fast runner rather than a flyer. Its large, flattened beak and powerful limbs indicate it might have fed on a variety of plant matter, possibly even scavenging smaller animals. It belongs to the avialan lineage and its features suggest a close relationship to modern ratites, though it was not a direct ancestor. The species size and morphology are thought to be influenced by the island environment of Hayteg, where many species exhibited insular dwarfism. Eurasdarko is a medium-sized member of Asdarkidae, the family to which it belongs. With extrapolations from the comparisons of cervical vertebrae and wing bones of Eurasdarko with those of the related Asdarkids Aegeangopterus from China, Vermeer and colleagues would estimate a wingspan not surpassing 3 meters within Asdarkidae. The position of Eurasdarko has been somewhat disputed, with some studies recovering it within the subfamily Quetzalcoatlini, while others have found it in a basal position within the family. If Eurasdarko was indeed distinct from Hatsigopteryx, its discovery implies the presence of two Asdarkid forms in the Hayteg fauna, the one gigantic, the other medium-sized. This suggests a niche partitioning between them, although it is as yet unclear how this correlates with differences in prey preference and hunting techniques. This reflects a pattern seen in other late Cretaceous faunae which also show a combination of a large as darked species with a smaller one.
Atsigopteryx was an immense darkid pterosaur that lived in the late Cretaceous, notable for its gigantic size, with estimates suggesting it had a wingspan of 10 to 12 meters. Its skull was one of the largest among non-marine animals, measuring about 2.5 meters, and it was robustly built, with stout bones and large muscular attachment points. Despite its massive skull, Hatsigopteryx's bones were hollow and structured similarly to polystyrene, which made it light enough to fly, even with such a large head. Its neck was exceptionally strong, thanks to thick-walled vertebrae that could withstand several times its body weight, a feature not seen in many other pterosaurs. Recent studies suggest that Hatsigopteryx had a relatively short but powerful neck, supported by extensive muscles, allowing it to be an effective predator. It likely foraged on land, hunting large prey, possibly even tackling animals too large to swallow whole, which placed it at the top of the food chain on Hayteg Island, a place dominated by island dwarf dinosaurs. This size and ecological role make it an apex predator in its ecosystem. The gigantism of Hatsigopteryx, like other large Cretaceous pterosaurs, might have been influenced by the unique conditions of the Hayteg Island ecosystem, where limited competition and fewer large predators allowed for such massive sizes. This phenomenon of gigantism in pterosaurs could also be related to the abundance of food resources and the evolutionary pressures of island environments. Barbatodon is mainly known from teeth and partial skull material, so its full size is uncertain, but it was likely rat-sized at around 20 cm in one specimen its teeth were also preserved with their original coloration, a distinctive blood red. This feature is seen in some modern rodents and shrews, and is caused by iron minerals in the enamel that are thought to add extra strength. Since Maltese didn't have ever-growing teeth like rodents, this added durability would have been especially important to them. Kogeanon was one of the first Kogeanids to be discovered, and gives its name to the group as a whole. Although known only from a skull, it was probably nutria-sized, around 40 centimeters long. Unusually for island species, which are often ecologically fragile and vulnerable, the Kogeanids' insectivorous habits allowed them to successfully survive through the end Cretaceous mass extinction 66 million years ago while the Hayteg dinosaurs and pterosaurs perished. And when conditions changed and their island home became reconnected to the rest of Europe they rapidly spread out and became common across the entire region for a further 10 million years, only finally disappearing in the early Eocene about 56 million years ago.